Hi, everybody. Welcome to another Park Report podcast interview. This is Roy. My guest on this episode is That Joe Payne, fantastic singer, formerly of the British prog group The Enid. He has a new album that's out now called Bread and Circuses. We talk about the album, some of the crazy songs on it, and what he's up to now. But before we get started, just a reminder, subscribe to our YouTube channel, wherever you get your podcasts, follow us on progpart.com and on all our socials. And now my chat with That Joe Payne. But uh, good to see you. Uh, and uh, is that is that where you've done a lot of your recording? That your your home studio there, where you, where you did a lot of the album? Yeah, man. This is my little home studio. Um, don't know how much you can see. Uh, yep. Yeah. So I've got the I managed to get the exact same desk that I recorded all my e- Enid albums on. Um, but for about a twentieth of the price because it's uh, no longer um, no longer worth anything. So <laughs> I've right, stuck to the crazy. way I've always done things, uh, but without the without the great expense of. Uh, I know like I had this digital. I had like this digital recording board that these things that were like before, kind of just before Pro Tools. It was like this thing, and you could record in it, and it had a bunch of tracks. It was this big unit. It was really cool at the time, and then like ten years later couldn't couldn't give the thing away just completely yeah. useless yeah yeah we, we we have a um we've got a bunch of friends um that they they sell computer gadgets and stuff from recording studios and whatever and they said oh this recording studio was doing a big clear out um i think it probably shut down and they said uh do you uh know what this desk is would you have any use for it and we went ah oh, that's exactly the same one um from the Lodge Recording Studio, which is the base for the Enid. Um, and I used to live there like for years and did loads of records on this on this desk. And he even did my By Name By Nature album on that desk. Um, and we and he was just like, Oh well, you know, it's yours for five hundred quid. <laughs> That's awesome. Man. And I, how cool is I that? I think I think they paid like something like something like fifteen grand for it. Um wow. yeah. when it was new. So we were just like we just couldn't believe it really. That's why. <laughs> uh, but I mean, I th- the last time we spoke was um, was for your last record, and which, man, time flies, right? That's already three what, years ago. Three years ago, that's crazy. I don't know. It's so crazy. I know, I know man. It's insane. You did, uh, and then you know, you did you did some shows during the pandemic, which was pretty cool. I saw one of the live stream things you did. It was kind of neat. Really excited about the new record, uh, Bread and Circuses. Um, which is out now, right? It's it's just been released, like just out and yeah. Uh, you know, it's cool, man. It's you have a. I like the style of music that you do because it's, it. I, I like a lot of poppy poppy stuff, but it always for me to to really get into it has to be, just you know more interesting, right? I'm not. Mm-hmm. I don't listen to like, I, I don't know the, the typical pop stuff. Stuff that's a little bit more in, has more stuff involved and you have that kind of progressive influence and edge that you still bring and tell this music which is why i like it so much um but talk about first of all what is bread and circuses is that like a british saying or something or or where does that phrase come from because i wasn't from have you never heard it before no oh wow okay um yeah so it's it's supposedly quite a famous political term um, that was actually coined by the ancient Romans, and they threw this around. Uh, I think it might have even been Julius Caesar who came up with it, um, and it was thrown around as this idea that if you give the people you serve just enough to eat and like enough to entertain them, so that might be you know, feeding people to the lions or the Olympic games right. or like in, in this country, it's basically football or soccer, you know, um, give people that circus then they can rally together and they'll be like, whoa, whoa, whoa and uh, just like forget about all their troubles and have this lovely thing that unites them all. Um, so that's the circus and the bread is an implication of just, you know, make sure people don't starve to death make sure they've got just enough right. to eat at the very least and then in theory everybody is then um content enough in life whether there's something 
more that they want perhaps there is uh but they won't want to rock the boat because they have just enough so they just go oh well you know it could be better but like it could be worse as well so i'm not going to i'm not going to make my life difficult by uh by revolting Actually, no, against what i already total, have makes total sense yeah <laughs> and, and i think and... i think i think the world right now is in an interesting um in an interesting place because the balance that particularly in the western world in the in first world countries we've had this balance of um having quite centrist politics for a very long time and people kind of going oh yeah well what difference does it make who i vote for and all this stuff and uh now we're kind of seeing that people are becoming more polarized people are starting to um fall out over things more and the disparity in wealth is becoming greater and all of these things are happening and yeah. um so this this phrase is kind of like well you know this is this is a an understanding should we say kind of between politicians and the people um you know give give us just enough um and then go and do what you want um yeah. People are now starting to go. Well, are you doing just enough? You know. So, yeah. so this, so the, this is these are now the big questions that that are being thrown around. And there's there's civil unrest and whatever. And uh, this is a great time for me to make this album, really. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's an appropriate title now that you mention it. And the song, you know, lyrically, it's is right on point there. I mean, that's a great song. It's the last song on the on the album, and I love it. Uh, it's sort of like the big prog epic, I guess you could call it. Um, mm -hmm. But man, I love, I you know, the minute you put on a song, and I'm gonna, I, we're we're gonna curse a little bit on this for anybody that's listening. But um, the minute I see a title called "Fucking Fucked," I'm like, that's the song I'm gonna like. I need to hear what this song is. That's the first song I went to to listen to, and uh, I, man, I just I love that song so much because I love the sarcastic, you know brilliance of how the style of song it is with the what you're saying and and it's just it's just the best talk about writing that song as silly as as may, it may be but <laughs> i think it's i think it's brilliant i know it may not be a song for everybody but i think it's amazing so talk about that okay uh so the so this song i mean like for a start i've always for my whole career been really afraid of swearing in songs cursing yeah. in songs um that and the reason the reason for that is because i i've i've been reluctant to um to alienate anyone or to um like affect the overall reach of a song because you swear on something and then people go oh well that will never get played on the radio uh but the way things are now i'm like well no one's going to play it on the radio anyway so i might as well fucking swear you know <laughs> so... that does change things nowadays for a lot of artists it does it changes things because you don't who knows what gets on the radio and if it's not your main hit hit single i've always been bothered by bands like famous famous bands that have a kid audience or or things like that or like a maroon five or whatever that'll throw a, a curse word in a very popular hit single just just cause, and there's no need for it. Like you could have said mm -hmm. any other word and it's just, I always feel like it's a put on, like you're just trying to be tougher. So you're throwing a bad word, like it's silly. Yeah. yeah. But I don't think that's the case with this song because this song is, I mean, it's all the lyrics. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so I mean like, so I came, I came up with everything for this song. Um, on, I always come up with all my songs when I'm walking. Usually I'm walking the dog or something. Um, but we were, me, me and my partner, Max, who's also my producer, we were on a walk in the south of France in the French Riviera. Um, and I was there because I was doing some work with a French prog band called Typhon. Um, and uh, like they have an amazing history. So look them up. Um, they're only they're only really known in France, um, yeah, but like they had that. they had hits in the seventies in France, and then their lead singer from then like became the biggest pop star in French history, um, and has written hits for Celine Dion and stuff. It's just oh, wow. like bonk, okay. bonkers, bonkers um, history to yeah. this band. 
Um, and now I sing for them. <laughs> oh, cool. But, All right. We got to talk more I was about in... that. Okay, cool. Yeah, tell me more about that. But so I was in the south of France and uh, going for a walk. But it, like, as I'm sure you've heard in the news, like the whole of Europe was basically on fire this this summer. Yeah. Um, there was huge droughts. And um, so everywhere we were, there were there were fire engines going past, putting out small fires and like most of the nature trails and walks and woodlands and everything were actually um, closed to the public. So we were having to be really inventive just just to go for a walk. And it was 37 degree heat, um, which uh, I'm not sure what that is in Fahrenheit, but yeah, that in Celsius, yeah, that's that's yeah, a lot like for us. Pretty high, yeah. It was awful. And like, you know, we, we were like staying in a room with no air con and um, just dying like for a week. <laughs> and so I um, I was really fed up being so hot um, and coping with coping with these this extreme weather. I was just like, I've had enough. I can't bear it anymore. And I'd finished doing these. I did a few shows with Typhon. And we were done with the shows, but we were still in France and we, we were intending to have a bit of a bit of a kind of working holiday I suppose while we're out there and we've gone for this walk and we're making the best of it and my mood was actually really low because I was just so fed up with being so hot uh, <laughs> and I just started going I'm fucked you're fucked we're all fucking fucked but at least we're fucked together forever and I'm just like this is this this is it now for the rest of our lives we're <laughs> fucked we're gonna be fucked forever now together ha huh! you know and that and that that's basically where I came up with it and um and it was just in like a day and like I knew as soon as I got home I was gonna have literally like weeks left to finish it and I was I was gonna be off doing another project as well and I was just like I don't have time to make another song but it has to go on this album yeah. And it actually delayed the finishing of this album, and and therefore like the amount of time oh, I've had to I, like to gather yeah. press and everything. But I was just like, it's worth it. It's going on there, like yeah. sod it. I'm doing it anyway. Um, and then, and and when it came to like the delivery of it, I thought I just wanna, I just picture myself being like Julie Andrews right. in um <laughs> in the Sound of Music, you know, when she's um when the kids will run into the bedroom because they're scared of the thunder and lightning. And she's um <laughs> got she's got them all like she's trying try, trying to like um get them all to calm down by going raindrops on roses and whiskers on yeah, kittens. Yeah, totally, total vibe. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. that was the vibe I was really going for. I could even picture myself doing another version of this song, um, where it's like the movie epic version, um, with like a full kind of cast of children and. <laughs> I, I don't know, know. I, I don't know how many consent forms <laughs> I'd have to get signed for that. No, well, it, it it sounds like something. I don't know if I don't know if you're familiar with the the Broadway play The Book of Mormon. Yeah. But it could it could be in there easily mm. and 100%. fit 100%. And and uh but I felt like lyrically you know, you explained how why you wrote it in the situation you were in, but to me it's like it's lyrics for every minute of our lives now like yeah like we're that's just so just stressed now like that's it yeah and it's so, just stress 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 all yeah the time. And so i felt like it it's a great meme to just you know while something bad happened you're you're late somewhere or your favorite sports team loses or whatever just just send that to a friend and it's like yeah mm -hmm. we're fucked like that's it yeah. just felt like that to me <laughs> and and I think it, works, it should be yeah. some kind of TikTok meme at some. So we got to get that going because I think it's <laughs> it's just meant to exist in that that kind of universe. I, I we've got to figure that out. Um, but a lot of great other stuff. I mean, you do a lot of different styles. Of falling in love is easy. It's just a great kind of up tempo '80s style rock track, which is which is super cool. And um, Plastic Grass is another one I really like. I mean, it's it's a, an eclectic mix of stuff, man. Congrats on this. I I really enjoy it. Thanks. How do you know you're done with an album? Like w w when you have eight songs here, was there more that you had read that you left off, or are you just constantly writing until you sense you're pleased with it? How does it? How does that work? I mean, every song on the album was a song that I knew definitely had to be on the album, and I easily had at least eight more. 
that were being that were kind of gestating if that's the correct word yeah. <laughs> uh, but the, the, there was tons of other songs that um, I started and had like mapped out and had the lyrics for and was tr- trying to figure out how to make them work and and just just was feeling like maybe it wasn't their time or maybe they just didn't um didn't sound as strong on paper as they did in, in my head you know mm. and so so there there was a lot of stuff that went back into the recycling bin uh that might might show its head again later uh but but I think when you when you come up with an idea for a song, you know what potential that song has, and you know that that song is destined for a record. So, so for me, even though it's a very eclectic album, every single one of those songs I always knew belonged on this album, and like you couldn't really very easily explain why yeah. these songs go together apart from that they all have a very strong um, political and social element to them where they're going into some kind of cryptic depth about the state of the world and the state of society and like how people's behaviour has been affected, climate crisis, Brexit, all of the stuff. So that, so that, so yeah, this is, this is my my bread and circuses as a UK person, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, I want to find out more about how you got involved with this band. Um, and, yeah. and now I didn't even I wasn't even aware that you were performing with another prog band. So that's sort of interesting to me now. Mm, how did OK, that come about. <laughs> yeah. So so this is quite a new thing. Um, I had my first event with them back in January this year which um it took a lot of work preparing for it because they have they have a very extensive back catalog and they very much threw me in the deep end um but basically this this band that they they've got a lot of history they they've released a lot of albums um and their original lead singer was a guy called Jean-Jacques Goldman and I don't know if you've ever heard that name mm-hmm. but if if you if you're French and you, if I say that name to a French person, they are so, 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 so excited. Um, and they will tell you, ah, oh, I had his poster on my bedroom wall. He was, he was the pop star. He was, he was the it man, you know. And um, so he, he on his own was absolutely massive, this, this original singer that they had. And he did the first three albums with them and then left to go and become a solo artist um, and then just became this huge star in France. And since then, as a songwriter, he's he wrote, I think, a few of the French speaking hits for Celine Dion to the point where I was even out one night in France and someone was singing one of these one of these songs um, that he wrote for Celine Dion and everyone was singing along and just really going for wow. it. And I was like, I was like, I've never heard the song in my life. Because of course, none of the French stuff is like known in the UK, and um, yeah, so no one in the UK has heard of Typhon, no one in the UK has heard of Jean-Jacques Goldman, but like in France and in French-speaking like countries, I think thing. so, like parts oh, wow. of Canada and stuff, like yeah, massive, massive, massive. Um, so yeah, so that that's really that's really interesting. So I'm singing his stuff from the seventies or stuff he wrote with the band in the seventies. And he had the most ridiculous range. So this is the thing, like finding a male vocalist who has a similar range to him. So I obviously have a big range. And also their lyrics are all in English, which is very unusual for a French band. So again, they've really struggled for years to find French vocalists that can deliver the English lyrics properly. So I am the solution and they they fly me in. How did they find out about you? (laughs) Yeah, they got in touch with me. They um they found out about me through one of the European prog magazines. I think it might have been Coid Nine. I think it might have been that one. 
um and they were looking for a, another singer and uh, one of the writers for the magazine said ah oh, you should try joe payne he used to be in the enid and um he'd be perfect for you and uh so they checked me out on youtube and everything and uh got in touch with me i think through like facebook messenger <laughs> <laughs> Wild, yeah. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> Amazing. And now I'm going to be we're filming a uh, filming like a DVD in February. I'm hope, hoping they do it on Blu-ray as well because um because DVDs are old. And uh <laughs> maybe they should go 4K with it actually. That yeah, might be nice. Sure. Um yeah, so so February we film a DVD. They're building up to their 50th anniversary. So they had their first hit in like 1974 or 1975. Um, so I think so. What they're they're planning a tour of Japan and Vietnam for next year um, because they're actually French Vietnamese, the founding members. Um, so so Japan and Vietnam. Hopefully, we're going to be going over there next year. That this has been like years in the planning, apparently, and like they've been planning it since before I came on board. And uh, then um, yeah, then it's going to be the fiftieth anniversary, and I think we're planning on making an album together. For the first time as well so that's gonna be cool that's awesome man congrats that's yeah, very man. cool yeah listen i think you're one of the best singers in the world for sure your voice oh is awesome. thanks <laughs> and uh i enjoy your your stuff a lot so uh good to hear more stuff is is continuing for you i think that's great and um the new album mm. bread and circuses out now what's the best place to get it where do you want to send people to get this album oh i mean if you want to get the physical copy which is the cd that's worth the most to me um and you can get that from my website that and i do do it all myself i do everything myself like i have have a my own shop so um buy it from me i'll sign it for you all of that or you can there get you it go. on Bandcamp. you can download it or buy the cd on there you can uh, stream it on every platform in the world really pretty much yeah. um so there's these days, I like I, I always let people know, you know, obviously the best way to support music is by buying the physical. And um, these days, I, I'm very aware of how much less realistic it is to just expect people to buy CDs and hoard stuff that they're actually not really going to play. Um, and so if if the way that you prefer to listen to stuff is by streaming it, then, you know, go for your life. Just do, do me a favor and share it as well. Let people yeah. know. So they look at it as well. <laughs> I think that's it. That's, that's the way to do it. I, 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 you're right on. Uh, cool, man. Listen, great talking to you and catching up. And uh, I don't know, make some kind of video for fucking fucks. Put it out there. I'm telling you, you got to do something yeah. with that. I've got uh, an idea for it actually already. <laughs> I was, I, I, I could, do you know, you know, like, um, what's, what's the film? Oh yeah. Chitty, Chitty, Bang, Bang. Sure. And, and they're dressed up as the giant, um, life-size dolls and they're on like a turntable and they look a bit like a music box okay. figurine. Yeah. Like, like, um, you'd get it on a jewelry box as a little ballerina. And I think that would work really well. As, a, as an idea so i could I put on a good. tutu and uh spin around do it. singing it that sounds awesome <laughs> <laughs> all right buddy have a great uh, rest of your day and I'll, we'll talk again soon thanks roy cheers mate all take right, care buddy. See ya. Bye. Bye. hey thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel follow us wherever you get your podcasts check us out on all our socials and on progreport.com for all your news interviews reviews and more and we'll see you again real soon